All right, we just covered what it is to be a bystander, active, passive, and positive and negative. And now I want to talk a little bit about this bystander effect. You have probably have heard this term, you probably have seen it in the media, probably have heard it at other work seminars or if you're in a sexual harassment type situation, but what is the bystander effect? And this is a fascinating effect. It is an inverse relationship. So if you've studied statistics at all, you'll understand that as one thing grows, the other decreases or kind of withers off. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So as we start to look at our chart, uh, if we were to look left and right, instead of having a curve that goes up, we'd have a curve that goes down. So the more of this, the less of that. And so the bystander effect is the effect, it's a definition, it's a term that has been coined around this bystander training, and it's a natural phenomenon that just occurs in our world, right? All across the globe, this bystander effect is almost like a law of nature. It just holds true everywhere we look. So what is it? You probably have guessed. It is that the more people that are bystanding, the less likely someone is to jump into the incident in a active positive manner, right? So the more bystanders that are there, the more people that are spectating and watching, the less likely anyone is to offer any help. Now you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense, but let's take a look at some real world examples here, okay? You are um, standing in line at a movie theater, right? And it's yourself, it's not a busy day, it's yourself, it's an older woman, maybe in her 70s, who's going out to enjoy the movie. And the clerk's behind the counter and she's fiddling with her purse and knocks the purse over. Now, you're right behind her. No one else is there. Do you step in and help her pick up her purse and put it on the counter for her? Or do you just let it be there? Now, <laughs> if you say, I'm just going to let it sit there and let her do her thing, then we have other issues we need to work on as, as you as a person, right? But generally speaking, most people are going to help the elderly pick up their belongings and put it back on the counter. Now let's, let's take that same example, but let's add a few more people in there. So now the elderly woman is at the front counter trying to pay for her items and there are 18 people in front of you. And the elderly lady now knocks her purse over. Are you the person that walks to the front of the line to give her a hand? Or are you the person that just sits back and watches and thinks someone else will handle it? And that's the key component behind the bystander effect. More people are there, the more likely you are to think someone else has handled it. It's the same thing that we look at when we drive down the freeway and we see a car accident. We generally think, and again, I'm not pointing the finger at any one of you or you specifically, but what I am saying is that we generally think, whether consciously or unconsciously, someone else has already made the call. They're okay, someone's made the call, okay? Take this same example. I was at an LA Kings hockey game and they had a bunch of people come out on the ice from the fans in the stand to play a, you know, what is it, intermission type game. And this gentleman, he was kind of the last in line and basically he slipped on the ice, fell, hit his head, and you could see the, the pool of blood start to you know, widen out on the ice. And being in risk management and safety, I saw this, I immediately looked down at my watch and started the timer because I was very high in the stands. Now, I'm a bystander. Could I rush down there? Certainly. But I'm thinking to myself, someone else has got to see that. There's 40 people on the ice. There's a bunch of people around. Well, it took two minutes for anyone to go over to this gentleman. That is the bystander effect in essence. So ask yourself, if you were 
there with a friend ice skating, it's just the two of you on the ice, they fall and hit their head and blood starts to come out. Do you immediately go over? What if it is a full ice rink with a bunch of people and someone falls and hits their head? Do you immediately go over or does someone else? And in our bystander training, what we're going to try to do today is to make you understand these common biases that come up in our head, uh, these common thoughts that flow through our, our mind when we see certain incidents and we tell ourselves someone else has already handled it. We're going to try and dispel some of that and we're going to try to give you the tools to become an active bystander, an active positive bystander when certain situations present themselves and it provides you an opportunity to lend that helping hand and hopefully reduce some of the negative things. Now, these are not those negative incidents like bullying, harassment, assault, or anything like that. So let's take a look at those because that's really what this course is designed around. So now, put yourself in this situation. I'll give you a good example. We went, I, I do a little bit of work for um, some of the insurance agencies around the, the globe. And basically, um, I was at one of the training seminars for uh, the insurance company. And so we had a probably 40 or so adjusters and risk management reps and all these folks there. And one of the things that we were talking about was sexual harassment and sexual harassment above, among the insured parties, so the clients of the insurance company. And a lot of the risk management reps were raising their hands and saying, it's really difficult um, to you know, talk about sexual harassment and get these owners of these smaller companies to understand that this is inappropriate behavior and all these types of things. And the bystander effect came up. And so we had a nice long conversation throughout the day the next day we come to the training seminar, we're all sitting in there and we go through another course and that evening they had a nice dinner for everyone that was there. So we go to the dinner and again, there's around 40 of us there and a lot of high level staff from the insurance company. Now, towards the end of the dinner, people have been drinking, having a good time, all this kind of stuff. Personally, I don't drink, so I'm, I'm observing this in a very, cognizant manner. And one of the risk management reps, the same one that was complaining about the clients, gets up, pulls out some dollar bills and starts doing somewhat of a strip tease around his table and then he's walking to other tables. And he, the one of the senior staff from the insurance company walks over to the bathroom and as he comes out of the bathroom, this guy with the dollar bills is standing there and starts dancing around the senior insurance rep. And the rep doesn't say anything. Well, he's the perfect person to say something because he's the one in charge of this whole meeting and the whole dinner and all this. So I keep nudging our direct representative that also works at the insurance company. And I said, are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Are you going to step in? Are you going to be an active, positive bystander? What's go why is your supervisor not doing what they're supposed to do? We just had this conversation yesterday and today about how difficult it is with clients. And now here we are right in the middle of an episode, an incident, a very negative incident. Why are you not doing anything? So those are the types of things that, again, if that guy, number one, probably wouldn't do that with just two or three people there. Number three is... Did I skip one? Are you paying attention? That's right, I went from one to three. So number three is that if there were just a couple of them there and that did happen, it's more likely that someone would stand in. So you could probably think about some of those incidents or events that happen, right? Same thing when dirty jokes are told in the office and you can see that someone's not comfortable with that or maybe it's a racial slur and there's a group of people around. Do you say anything or do you just kind of think, wow, 
what a jerk. That person's a jerk. They shouldn't be saying those things. They shouldn't be doing those things. It's completely inappropriate. You go home, you tell your significant other, you tell your children, you tell your parents, whatever it may be. But the idea here is that, again, the bystander effect is the terminology that has been coined to say that the more people are in a room, the more people that are witnessing the event, the less likely it is that anyone will step in in an active, positive manner. So that's the bystander effect. It's an inverse relationship. The more people there, the less likely something good is to come out of it. So what we want to do is reverse that dynamic by understanding the proper tools and the proper methodologies to actually be an active, positive bystander. So let's move on to our next topic.